a 3ms project 2010 tutorial and this is the last one in this video we are going to cover copying and printing views briefly touching upon varied variety of views in ms project introducing resource planning and assignment and formatting gantt chart and timeline view and in the process touching upon baselining now let's look at copying and printing views as a project manager, you may need to share details of a project with employees who do not have MS Project or who may prefer simple snapshots. Two views can be used, Gantt chart and timeline view, to share schedule details. So let's look at how we can do that. This is my Gantt chart view, and this is my timeline view. Timeline view is accessible by clicking on View. And under split view, go ahead and click on timeline. In order to view Gantt chart, you can simply go to task tab and under view, click on the drop down. Various views are available. From that, simply go ahead and click on Gantt chart. Once we do that, let's look at Gantt chart view first. Go ahead and select the task which you would like to print. Then go to the task tab. Under clipboard, there's something called copy. Click on that drop down. There's something called copy and copy picture. Click on copy picture. Once you do that, another window would open. You can select the option. So, for instance, I'm going to select for printer. And you can make changes based on time scale, based on selected rows or all the rows on the screen whatever it is that you want to copy and then click OK. Once I do that then I'm going to go to my Word doc or in your case you can go to notepad or a PowerPoint file or Excel file whatever it may be. And I'm going to go to the home tab in my Word document under clipboard I'm simply going to press paste. Once I do that my Gantt chart along with relevant details has appeared. So this is just how simple it is to copy and print a Gantt chart. So now let's go back to the timeline view in MS Project. This is my timeline view and I'm going to click inside the timeline view to activate it. Once I do that I'm going to go to the format tab. Notice that the format options have changed. If I click on the Gantt chart Notice my format options are totally different, but if I click on the timeline view, the format options change based on what is applicable for timeline. So in that tab, I'm going to go to copy and there's something called copy timeline. I'm going to click on that drop down. Three options are available for email, for presentation and full screen. I'm going to go ahead and click on for presentation and then I'm going to go back to my Word document and let's say I'm simply going to press enter and I'm going to press control V in the keyboard or you can go back to the home tab and under clipboard go ahead and press paste. Once I do that my timeline has appeared. When a project has multiple phases and numerous tasks Using letter size paper can require several sheets to print. So some heavy duty project users make poster size printouts using plotters instead of a printer. So either ways you know how to copy and paste data in presentations or in Word doc, Notepad, Excel, wherever it is that you need to paste it and then you can go ahead and print it from there. Now let me introduce you to varied variety of views is in MS Project 2010. If you go to the task tab, under view there's something called Gantt chart. Click on that drop down. These are the various built-in views available to the user. Right now we are using the Gantt chart view. So if you click on it, this is what is available here. Gantt chart is one of the most commonly used views in MS Project. It is used to view tasks, create dependencies between tasks through links and see how your project is progressing over time. The Gantt chart view consists of two parts, a table 
on the left hand side and a bar chart on the right hand side. The bar chart includes a time scale band across the top that denotes units of time. The bars on the chart graphically represent the tasks in the table in terms of start and finish date, duration and status. The Gantt chart is a popular and widely understood representation of project information throughout the project management world. Gantt chart with timeline is another kind of view, which we currently have open. It is identical to the Gantt chart view with the addition of the new timeline view above the Gantt chart, which is this. Now let's look at network diagram. So I'm going to go ahead and click on network diagram. And here it is. It is used to access the relationships and flow of work in the project with the critical path highlighted in red. Non-critical tasks are shaded in blue and manually scheduled tasks are textured. Now let's look at task sheet. Task sheet is a counterpart to the resource sheet in that the task sheet view displays task information in a spread sheet style. You can create, edit, and link tasks and allocate resources in this view. Now let's look at resource sheet. Currently we do not have any resources, therefore it's blank. But basically a resource sheet allows you to manage your project resources including their types and cost information, initials, standard rate, so on and so forth. A while ago I mentioned Gantt chart and timeline view. In particular, timeline view is a new feature in Microsoft Project 2010. It allows you to add key tasks to a timeline that can be used to graphically communicate high-level schedules to project stakeholders. And this is what timeline is depicting for this particular project. And finally, the Gantt chart view. So again, I'm going to go to the Task tab. Under View, I'm going to click on this drop-down. And I'm going to click on Tracking Gantt. Once I do that, notice that the timeline part on the right-hand side has changed. Tracking Gantt is based on Gantt view and provides a great visual way to evaluate the progress of individual tasks, the project as a whole, or any level in between. It presents the additional information about tasks such as plan versus actual progress and slippage visually, allowing the user to plan necessary corrective action. And as a user, we will need at least one baseline to be able to see plan versus actual progress. Baseline is a common project practice which refers to a set of data about the project that represents the state of project before work initiation. Baseline proves valuable in comparing real life of the project with that of project during the planning stages. Project supports about 11 baselines in a single plan, where actually there are 10 baselines and a standard initial project status. So let me just demonstrate that to you. We're going to go to the project tab. Under schedule, there's something called set baseline. Click on that drop down and then click on set baseline. Another window would pop up. Click on this particular drop-down and notice there are 10 baselines plus, plus a normal baseline. So I'm just simply going to click OK here. Once I do that, notice that there's a gray bar which has appeared right under these shaded blue bars. This is my baseline bar. Now let's just say I'm going to increase two days to three days for module one. Let's just say the programmer was absent and it just took one extra day to complete module one. So I'm going to change that to three. And when I hit enter, notice what has happened to the tracking Gantt chart. The blue arrow has increased by one day. However, the baseline has remained the same because this represents our planning stage view. This is the baseline of the project. So this is essentially helping us in tracking the progress of the project. 
and tracking project ensures that the timeline stays on target and we can take corrective actions when essential. It is more difficult to keep a plan on track after reality sets in and starts to tear the plan apart than building a good plan initially. So MS Project has provided us a whole gamut of features which facilitate progress tracking and comparison of progress to the original plan, just like this one here. Now let's talk about our final topic, resource planning and assignment. Resource planning is a crucial aspect for any organization and any project, and project offers such tool to facilitate this. In project, there are three kinds of resources, work, cost, and material. Before I take you through the definitions of these three, let me just show you how to assign resources and if you do not have any resources, how can we include them in our file or to create new resources. So this is our Gantt chart view. Let's go to the resource tab. And under assignments, there's something called assign resources. Click on that. A new window would appear. Notice that it is totally blank. That means there are no resources existing in this file. So I'm simply going to close this. I have two options. I can go to the view tab. And under resource views, there's something called resource sheet. I'm going to click on that. Once I do that, the resource sheet opens and I can go ahead and start typing in the resource name, type, material, initials, and so on and so forth and include all the resources that are there. Or I have another option to include resources from another file provided that resources already exist in another file and we share the same resource pool. So I'm going to go to the resource tab and under assignments there's some, something called resource pool so I'm going to click on that drop down once I do that click on share resources another window would open in that go ahead and click on use resources and it requires at least one open resource file so ensure that the file from which you would like to import the resources is open and then under from click on the drop down and select the file from which you would like to import the resources from and I'm going to click OK now once I do that notice all the resources have been imported to this file now I'm going to go back to the Gantt chart view and I'm going to go to module 1 let's say I want to assign a resource to this particular module so I'm going to click on that module and then I'm going to click on resources and I'm going to click on assign resources once I do that another window would open and this is the same window which was open just a while ago and it was totally blank and I'm going to select office manager from there and I'm going to click on assign and then I'm going to close it once I do that notice office manager has appeared here and in addition to that in the task form, notice that Office Manager can work for 16 hours, leveling delay, start date, schedule finish time, all of that information has appeared here. I'm going to right click on resource name and I'm going to select work. Let's say my Office Manager is going to be available only half of the time. He or she is not going to be available for the full time. So under units, there's something called 100%. I'm going to decrease it to 50%. Notice that the current duration of this task is two days. It is two days from here, and it's evident from this particular place as well. And now I'm going to click OK. Once I do that, notice the duration has increased to four days. Similarly, in this case, it has increased to four days and notice how the timeline has changed. So this is how you can play around with the units and how you can change the timeline by assigning multiple resources or less resources based on what is available to you to efficiently work through your timeline. 
Now I'm going to go back to the resource sheet under view and here it is. Notice under type when I click on this drop down there are three kinds of resources available work, material and cost. Work resources are most used and it is anyone who works on the tasks such as the people and equipment needed for completion. Then our next type of resource is cost. Cost resources are associated with financial costs incurred for a task. These are essentially expenses such as travel, entertainment, airfare, so on and so forth. A final type of resource is material. Material resources are consumable and they're assumed by project in unlimited supply and are used up as the project proceeds. For example, an IT project needs cable, a printing project needs paper, and a construction project needs steel or concrete throughout the project. So let me just go back to the Gantt chart view and here it is. Now I hope you are more comfortable with Microsoft Project 2010 and hope it has given you the ability to create timelines in a project, track progress, create resources and assign resources. Now let me just go ahead and introduce you to some bit of formatting. Once you have your Gantt chart view open, go ahead and click on Format tab. Notice various options are available under Format tab. The first one under Format is Textiles. You can go ahead and change the style of the text, the font, the size, the font style, bold, italic, strike through, underline, background color, so on and so forth from here. So if I want to change it to this, I can go ahead and do that. And my font has changed. You can also insert column from here. Under columns, there's something called insert column. So if I click on that, I have the ability to insert column and I have the ability to choose from these kinds of columns. But I'm not going to do that. Another feature is bar styles. You can format the bars which are currently available in the timeline. So, for example, I can go ahead and click on format drop down and I'm going to click on bar. Another window would appear and I can change it to any I like. Let's say I want to be able to change the color. So if I want to change it to red, I'm simply going to click OK. Because I had selected this particular bar, it would change only that one. I also have the ability to highlight the critical path by clicking on this particular place and also highlight slacks or late tasks. I can also change the format of my baselines or slippages. Finally, I can apply themes or styles to my entire timeline by simply going to the Gantt chart style drop down and let's say I want to change it to orange. So everything would change to orange. I can also include outline number by clicking on outline number. So all of these would have outline numbers. And then project summary tasks, which is already there. So this is how you can format your Gantt chart. Similarly, in terms of timeline, you can go ahead and click on timeline under the view tab. Once you do that, timeline would appear and go ahead and click on the timeline so that it gets activated and format tab options would change and here you can make the changes based on what you like. If you want to change the date format you can do that. If you want to change the font, color, so on and so forth you can do that from here. Hope this was useful. This video was brought to you by CXO Learning Academy, a premier learning initiative by CXO Math. For any queries, you can email us at learning at cxomath.com.